the first serial killer in the United States was Dr. Henry Howard Holmes, also known as H.H. H. Holmes. Holmes was born as Herman Webster Mudgett in Gilmanton, New Hampshire, on May 16, 1861, to Levi Horton Mudgett and Theodate Page Price, both of whom were descended from the first English immigrants in the area. Mudgett was his parents' third-born child. He had an older sister Ellen, an older brother Arthur, a younger brother Henry, and a younger sister Mary. Mudgett was born into a wealthy family and showed signs of high intelligence from an early age. Always interested in medicine, he allegedly trapped animals and performed surgery on them. Some accounts of his life even suggest that he killed a childhood playmate. Mudgett attended medical school at the University of Michigan, where he was a mediocre student. In 1884 he was nearly prevented from graduating when a widowed hairdresser accused him of making a false promise of marriage to her. In 1886 Mudgett moved to Chicago and took a job as a pharmacist under the name Drive. H.H. H. Holmes. Soon afterward he apparently began killing people in order to steal their property. The house he built for himself, which would become known as Murder Castle, was equipped with secret passages, trap doors, soundproof rooms, doors that could be locked from the outside, gas jets to asphyxiate victims, and a kiln to cremate the bodies. At the reputed peak of his career, during the World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago in 1893, he allegedly seduced and murdered a number of women, typically by becoming engaged to them and then killing them after securing control of their life savings. Mudgett also required his employees to carry life insurance policies naming him as beneficiary so that he could collect money after he killed them. He sold the bodies of many of his victims to local medical schools. In 1893 Mudgett was arrested for insurance fraud after a fire at his home, but he was soon released. He then concocted a scheme with an associate, Ben Pytazel, to defraud an insurance company by faking Pytazel's death. After Pytazel purchased a $10,000 life insurance policy, he and Mudgett traveled to Colorado, Missouri. New York, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Texas, where they committed other acts of fraud. Returning to Missouri, Mudgett was arrested for fraud and briefly jailed in St. Louis. While in jail he met Marion Hedgepeth, a career criminal who agreed to help Mudgett in the insurance scheme with Pytazel. Meanwhile, Pytazel moved to Philadelphia and opened a fake patent office to swindle inventors. After his release from jail, Mudgett traveled to Philadelphia and killed Pytazel. He then convinced Pytazel's widow, who had been aware of her husband's involvement in the insurance scheme, that her husband was still alive, later giving her $500 of the money he collected. Worried that some of Pytazel's five children might alert the authorities, Mudgett killed three of them. Insurance investigators were alerted to the fraud by Hedgepeth, and Mudgett was arrested in Boston, Massachusetts, in 1894. In 1894, Marion Hedgepeth, who was angry that he did not receive any money in the initial scam, told police about the scam Holmes had planned. The police tracked Holmes, finally catching up to him in Boston where they arrested him and held him on an outstanding warrant for the Texas horse swindle. At the time of his arrest, 
Holmes appeared as if he was prepared to flee the country and police became suspicious of him. Chicago police investigated Holmes' castle, where they discovered his strange and efficient methods for committing tortuous murders. Many of the bodies they located were so badly dismembered and decomposed that it was hard for them to determine exactly how many bodies there really were. The police investigation spread through Chicago, Indianapolis, and Toronto. While conducting their investigation in Toronto, police discovered the bodies of the Pytazel children, who had gone missing sometime during Holmes' insurance fraud spree. Linking Holmes to their murders, police arrested him and he was convicted of their murders. He also confessed to 28 other murders. However, through investigations and missing persons reports, it is believed that Holmes is responsible for up to 200 murders. Despite his confession of 27 murders, while awaiting execution, Holmes was convicted and sentenced to death for only one murder. That of accomplice and business partner Benjamin Pytazel. It is believed he killed three of the Pytazel children, as well as three mistresses, the child of one of the said mistresses and the sister of another. Much of the lore surrounding the murder castle, along with many of his alleged crimes are considered likely exaggerated or fabricated for sensationalistic tabloid pieces. Many of these factual inaccuracies have persisted due to the combination of ineffective police investigation and hyperbolic tabloid journalism, which are often cited as historical record. Holmes gave various contradictory accounts of his life, initially claiming innocence and later that he was possessed by Satan. His propensity for lying has made it difficult for researchers to ascertain the truth on the basis of his statements. More often, it has to be a series of similar crimes, committed over a period of time, usually more to satisfy a psychological urge on the killer's part than any more practical motive. And the murders we can't connect to Dr. Henry Howard Holmes generally had a clear motive. Someone knew too much, or was getting in his way, and couldn't be trusted. The murders weren't simply for love of bloodshed but a necessary part of furthering his swindling operations and protecting his lifestyle. Dr. Henry Howard Holmes was tried in Philadelphia for the murder of Pytazel and was sentenced to death by hanging. In May 1896, one of America's first serial killers, H. H. Holmes, was hanged. Holmes was executed on May 7, 1896, nine days before his 35th birthday. The castle, which he used to commit his crimes, was remodeled as an attraction and named the Holmes Horror Castle. However, it burned to the ground shortly before its opening. Thank you for watching Death Row.